Welcome to the latest anime news <laughs> for the week ending July 31st, 2021. Um, manga sales have been on the rise all over the world since the pandemic shutdown started, but the recent increase in France has come for another reason at least, or multiple reasons. The French government launched an initiative back in May to give all 18-year-olds an allowance of 300 euros, that's about 350 US dollars, to spend on the arts. And I'm sure they meant that they, they thought they meant they would all go to the Louvre. As of this month, 75% of all purchases, purchases made through the program have been books, with roughly two-thirds of those being manga. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Uh, the app that distributes the funds is called Culture Pass, but the French news media is now calling it Manga Pass. Uh, <laughs> Uh, the program has unsurprisingly drawn criticism for not encouraging youth to invest in less popular arts. Um, but supporters of the program and, of course, bookstore owners are still happy with the results, you know. A yeah. bookseller in Paris commented, Don't be sorry they read manga. You have to remember that before this, young people would stop reading altogether at that age. Um, yep. Owners of other bookstores have also expressed their appreciation that the teens are coming to buy manga volumes in person, sometimes dozens of volumes at a time. Wow. I don't, know, I don't think I've ever done that. No, I haven't. No. Um, the owner of two independent bookstores in Paris remarked that, quote, getting young people who read but who are more used to Amazon or big box stores to come into us isn't easy, end quote. Fair. Um, this program was one of the, the president's campaign promises. He said in a speech commemorating the, commemorating the launch of the program that it would be a formidable victory for France if the youth would stop rejecting literature and film. Um, now, Macron himself is a manga fan. He recently met with the creators of Akira and Fairy Tale, and was given a special illustration from Eiichiro Oda of One Piece, dedicated to him as well as all the other One Piece fans in the country. Um, I, I gotta say, um, you know, if if I'm involved in this and I'm I'm kind of uh, um, doing this, I gotta wonder like how much are people upset, and how much are they like, okay. You know, like, like, if I did this program and I was like, I, I expected them to go to the museums, but they bought manga instead. Yeah, I'd rather them go there, but is, is this worth screaming and yelling about? I don't know. <laughs> I'm sure somebody would be upset. True. But, true. but then again, if you're actually looking at it as in terms of the economy, Mm -hmm. that as we would over here in the United mm -hmm. States because apparently we value the dollar more than we value art um, but you know then again we're not a centuries old multi True. centuries old nation as France is True. which has plenty of art yeah to look at. but um, still I think it's great I, yeah. I, I you know sure why not mm -hmm. yeah um, I, I mean I mean, even in my days of, of going to, to cons and buying multiple volumes of manga because they can real cheap, I still never bought dozens of, like, serialized <laughs> manga. I mean, yeah. I, I would just... I mean, honestly, if someone gave me $350, I would... Yeah, I'd do the same thing. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah, well, I'd do the same thing. And, and, you know, back in the day, that was, like... Three box sets. <laughs> right, right. So, you know, that, that can go quite a ways. I just ran some numbers and I realized that, um, let me get to that. Um, um, so 75% of the, uh, the money went to uh, books and a third of that went to manga. Um, I'm sorry, two thirds of that went to manga. I, I got my, my numbers all wrong. So, um, so that means half. Half of all the money in that program went to manga. <laughs> awesome. Amazing. Awesome. I, I, I will say, the only time I think I, I know I've, I've done something, something like that in the past was if there was like a 20-volume series and I got in like volumes 1 through 5 and I went somewhere and they had volume 6 through 20, that's when I would do that, right? Um, you know, now that you mention it, I think that would be something like if I found Buddha. Yes, yeah. This entire mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. yep. mm -hmm. thing. Yep. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's the only. <laughs> dozens of. I mean, I guess, granted, you know, if you're into One Piece, there's a lot of One Piece. <laughs> you know, that, would, that, would, that would do it. Um, 
Yeah, and it's a, it's a good point, Jay, you know, and, and head over to write stuff to buy more manga. Um, why not? Um, get in on that sale. The uh, Kanekawa president, Takeshi Natsuno, came under heavy criticism this week for remarks he made concerning manga content and how it's received overseas. His comments were made during an ABEMA Prime program regarding the appropriateness of gravure in boys' magazines and were criticized for expressing a pro-censorship view, especially in light of his position as a significant publisher like Kanekawa. Um, he noted that there is a great deal of manga that is, quote, even more stimulating than gravure, end quote, saying, quote, with that in mind, a lot of Japanese manga won't pass review at Google or Apple, so while keeping that in mind, I do somewhat have the feeling that we have to reestablish the standards of what is okay to release and what isn't for the internet era. In the publishing industry that I'm in, everyone is in the pro-freedom of speech camp, but I do get this strong feeling that we have to redraw the line somehow, end quote. Um, many creators and writers expressed their strong disagreements with his statements. Ken Akamatsu, not surprisingly, uh, creator of Love Hina and Nagima, commented that while he didn't think Natsuno's statements uh, were made with the intention of convincing other publishers to censor their manga, his level of influence gives him the power to impose censorship at Katakawa should he choose. Um, Akamatsu also pointed out that Katakawa, unlike other major publishers, is listed on the first section of the Tokyo Stock Exchange. Um, Akamatsu said, quote, it appeals to shareholders to conform to the standards of foreign capital, end quote. Um, novelist uh, Mikito Chinen tweeted, if censorship were to happen, then Japan's manga and anime would lose all their predominance. Manga and anime are received well overseas because they were created with freedom and without consideration for what will do well there. It is quite dangerous for this kind of opinion to emerge from Katakawa. Uh, Natsuno issued a formal apology on Wednesday, recognizing that while he participated as an individual, it was still inappropriate for him to make such remarks as the president of the company. He emphasized that his individual comments have no bearing on the direction of the company and will take a 20% pay cut as repentance for the next three months. Okay. Whether or not you agree with him, wouldn't it be nice if we could do that to our own CEO? Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> wow. You know, you know, take a twenty percent pick up or saying something stupid. Mm -hmm. Please. Yeah. Want to add, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, but I, I you know, I, I, but again, I, you know, I think a lot of people know my stance on on, on censorship, which is I'm, sure. I'm not big on it, mm -hmm. and and you know when you hear things like that that come out of the, it, it's one thing for me to say it right you know, like like if i were to be you know pro that way mm -hmm. and say i think we should do it you know repeat what he said mm -hmm. and not being the president of the publishing company yeah that would be one thing mm -hmm. right you know but when you are the public the, the president of a publishing company and you start talking about censorship the problem that i think people will have with that is that well you're part of the industry so you want some kind of control mm -hmm. of the industry and and that control is going to come from you because that's really what you want mm -hmm. and that's where i think a lot of people get a, a big problem this is one of the things that I'm, I'm sure he understood this but a lot of people i think don't understand is that as the president of the company you are always president of the company in every mm -hmm. situation, you are never off the record. That just does not exist. That's, that's it. Yeah. Um, you, you, you don't get that option. And even on the program, with I'm sure there's a disclaimer or somewhere. Um, I think it just it, it, it does say. And and again, I, 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 I can appreciate being a a publisher saying and, and having the opinion of you know I think some of these things are too extreme and we're going to have to redraw the lines at some point. Um, I, I think that that's not an unreasonable opinion to have, but when you state it, you know, in that position, right. then right. people get, take yeah. the wrong opinion, and he he should have realized that. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's kind of kind of unfortunate. Um, um, good on him for taking the pay cut, though. Yeah. Um, I think that 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 tells that he's serious about the uh, the significance of the statement, and that he he recognizes that it's not just him. That, that, that it was a it was a it was a misstep. It was not just oops, I said the wrong thing. Right. Um, I I am curious about this this statement that. Um, okay. Let me let me let me ask this. So the the term here, um, and I, I'm sure when they're talking about gravure, um, they're not speaking about you know photo etching. Um, you know, the, the, the common thing, but is, is they're, they're speaking of um, somewhat more mature material, I, I'm assuming, um, in, in their anime and in their manga. Um, 
Do we really think that's what makes anime and manga popular overseas? When I bring up the subject of manga to someone who doesn't really know what that is, mm-hmm. the first thing I have to explain is what is manga, <laughs> you know. But then once you explain it yeah. and you kind of, um, for want of a better term, um, Americanized the explanation, meaning, hey, this is mm-hmm. kind of like Japanese comic books. And stuff. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. You know, the, the, the reaction yet is not one of, Oh, I'm gonna get that because I get to see naked. It's more <laughs> you know, it's more yeah. the lines of, mm-hmm. oh, you know, I like the Iron Man movies, so mm-hmm. I want to, you know, see this. I want to see mm-hmm. the adventure. It's different. See, yeah, it's it's a different concept. I don't think anybody internationally is going there. To, you know, if you want porn, <laughs> if you want porn, there's easier ways and cheaper ways to do it. You know, mm-hmm. it's, it's just a keystroke of a way, clearly. Yeah. Um, so I don't think that's that's the problem. I think the problem is, and I think you've alluded to this in the past in, in our discussions about it, mm-hmm. which is when it is being done, mm-hmm. <clears throat> where is the line where it becomes... And I, I just looked it up, yeah. and I realized this is important for the discussion, which I should point out. Gravure idols are specifically underage idols. That's that that that, that, yeah. that appear in swimsuits and sometimes less than swimsuits in various outfits. And it's a big deal in Japan for because some of those things very much cross the line into very suggestive material. Um, and so I, I think what you're referring to here is obviously you have characters in manga who are clearly underage, dressed in you know very provocative outfits or or um, uh, panty shots of underage characters. So I, I think it's it's that specific thing he's talking about. So yeah. yeah. Because that, that that's a different frame of the conversation. Yeah. And but again, still, I mm-hmm. you know, when, yeah. when you say to the average American, "Would you buy a manga? One Piece? Okay, that sounds like right. American Ball Z. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, sure. Okay, here's a grab here. Oh, really? Ah. Uh, 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 <laughs> no. And 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 that's where I think it's, it's kind of interesting. Where you know, if he's basically, if somebody base, if the topic of the conversation is specifically gravure, and he's saying, yeah, mm-hmm. that is a problem internationally because like that is a problem internationally and that you know that may affect the issue affect the industry in the future like that is a much more understandable sort of tack he's taking in that conversation as opposed to we got boobies we can't have that anymore right um and by the way to be clear like it is illegal according to the u.s code to own an illustration of an underage character involved in adult materials. Um, you know, that's the, you know, in any way, shape, or form. So that is just a, a legal difference that they have to deal with. Um, so that's kind of interesting. I don't know. Um, but, uh, uh, yeah, I, I think all things considered, like you said, I think, um, you know, at least he took the pay cut. At least he apologized and said, "I, you know, and and again, I, I appreciate that he, he he apologized not in the sense of um, I should never have been on a TV show, of saying, you know, I, I I I said something in a role that I should not have said." Right. So, cool. Um, um, <laughs> speaking of people uh, talking, um, last weekend's Comic Con at Home event featured an interview with Evan Gallion creator Hideaki Anno. Discussing the, and thank you, thank you to Becca, who puts together our news, for calling, for putting scare quotes around final Evangelion film. Um, he also discussed his future plans. Uh, Otto said that he has relieved the movie and the series is finished. After taking twice as long as he planned, uh, I guess the movie is finished, um, barring 3.0. Point one, point two, um, and praise the cast and staff for always working hard to maintain a high quality on every aspect of the work. He was asked about why he thought the series was so popular globally and said that while it's difficult to say for each person, people are, uh, all over the world have clearly come to empathize with something in this series, perhaps the emotions it expresses or the structure that could be taken as their own stories. Uh, when asked about the future for him, he said, It took 16 years to finally finish this series. I'm really relieved. When I realized I had turned 60, um, now that I've turned 61 this year, from now on I plan on making some new live-action films instead of Eva. 
Uh, for animation, it'd be great if I have a chance to do it again after I take some live action shots. Nothing has been decided yet, though. Um, he also explained what he's looking forward to about moving into live action, saying, Making a live action video is totally different from animation. I can do a lot of things that I can't do with animation, and that's why I'm really looking forward to it. I want to do things that are only possible in live action. Which is interesting because how often animators talk about how the freedom of animation. Um, finally, Ano commented that he usually makes his works, including Evangelion, for the Japanese audience with Japanese themes in mind, and is grateful and honored that his works have been seen and loved by people all over the world. So basically, he's making live action versions of that good job. Yes, <clears throat> exactly, <laughs> pretty much. Um, and by the way, to those unclear, he's made several live action films already. Um, it's not his, his first work, um, but yeah. Um, no, I, I, I think. So first off, will there be a revision to the rebu to the final rebuild movie? Will he change yeah. anything? Yeah, yeah, I yeah. agree. Um, Will, uh, some, okay, um, do you think Anno will come back to Evangelion in animation in a serious way in the future? Like, is he going to make another series, another set of movies, something like that? Or do you think he's, you know, not necessarily, maybe he'll make a short, something like that. But do you think he's really seriously going to come back to it from this point on? No, I think he'll be the producer in this guy. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, mm -hmm. but you know, if, if it's pitched to him, he'll be like, "Yeah, sure, okay, uh huh, mm -hmm. yeah, in." Yeah, I, I completely agree. Do you think uh, how long until we get another Evangelion remake, but directed by somebody other than Anno? I'm gonna say not that long. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna say two years. Wow. Okay. Wow. All right. Interesting. Mm -hmm. yeah. Fair. Um, yeah, it's gonna happen. We're, we're, we're gonna we're gonna get. I know they're stick figures. <laughs> I don't know. Um, well, we talked before. I think you know that that universe certainly has space for more stories. Yeah. So at the very least, I could see somebody doing a like a side story in the Evangelion universe. Yeah. Um, but what wouldn't boy? What would Evangelion buy? You know. Shinbo look like, or by Shinkai look like, or by Hosoda look like. I just, the mind reels, I wonder. Um, and I say that because Evangelion pieces together so many, like, bits of j super robot lore, and, well, not lore, but the super robot sort of references, and, uh, and um, it's a very kind of otaku thing. And so I just don't know how somebody else can get all of those sort of pieces put together. But people said that about Gundam, you know, that Gundam couldn't possibly be made by other people. So I don't know. I think it'll be more along the lines of character-driven as opposed to concept-driven. Mm. Like, mm. I think, what the, I think mm -hmm. they'll leave the concept alone. I think what will happen is that you'll get, okay, and this is what Masato was doing. Yeah, mm -hmm. this is what, I agree. You know, this is how he, this is how... He, Actually, for Shinji, it would just be easy. This is how Shinjo, uh, Shinji became emo. He was born that way. <laughs> Get the damn robot, Shinji. <laughs> um, also this week, news stories we wanted to just touch on. NFTs. 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 Um, increasingly, com increasingly common topic in the world of digital arts Anime and manga industry is no exception. This week, a new NFT project was announced from the creator of Phoenix Wright, the, the Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney manga, Kazuo Meakawa, and writer and podcaster Tony Vega. The, and this is the thing, it is a project called Crypto Cross Manga. Um, that is the project title, but they're going to call it B&B &B Bad Sisters, like the actual story. And it's set in an alternate reality, Crypto Tokyo, where, crypt where cryptocurrency is a part of daily life and gangs of crypto-obsessed teenagers roam around. The main characters are high schooler sisters who restore peace to Crypto Tokyo. The world will be developed through both digital and physical art releases, and the creators are also looking into other ways of telling the story along with the art. The art pieces will launch in multiple batches over a two-month period, with the first set of 27 pieces debuting on August 6th. So... I'm not sure if that means whether the art itself will be released as NFTs 
or if NFTs are just the plot of the thing. I don't know. So the, um, the here's the thing. So the makers of the 21st Amendment, 21st Amendment beer, I think it's the, mm. they had, or was it? No, it's 21st, 21st Amendment. And um, for those of you who don't know what 21st Amendment is, that is the repeal of the 18th Amendment. Mm. You know, with alcohol. Mm. They had a series of beers they put out, and on the cans were comic cans. Huh. So, with each year with their seasonal release, would be a new three can. Interesting. And it was about how the evil cats, I think, you know, cats were trying to bring back prohibition. And the uh, dogs were trying to prevent it. And I think the, I think the brewery was 20%. Uh, okay. was another brewery. But the reason why I bring that up is that is that if you're doing an NFT thing mm. and you're telling your story about that thing, then they're going to tell you you have to buy the NFT. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, if you want this, you know, and then, or they might cross media it or they might have to, you know, whatever it is that they're going to do. And it may be a very limited edition of what you mm -hmm. get. Yes, yeah. they'll probably be like going, okay, well, this 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 thing might normally have cost you uh, fourteen ninety five in the bookstore, but we're going to charge you um, eight bitcoins, which would be about one hundred twenty thousand mm -hmm. dollars. So here you go. Yep. So here's your here's your manga. Yeah. Digital manga. Yeah, I'm curious. I, I completely agree. I think they're gonna they'll, they'll they'll make NFTs of like the original digital art. But then they'll also, you know, they'll also distribute it some other oh, yeah, way. Sure. Either way, yeah. Right? yeah. Um, but it's an interesting idea, definitely. Um, anime studio Geek Toys announced this week it's producing a TV anime adaptation of the Taiwanese role-playing game franchise Fantasia Sango to premiere this October. Um, it combines the Romance of the Three Kingdoms Chinese novel with supernatural fantasy elements. No one's done that before. Um, I kid. <laughs> A new original short TV anime was also revealed this week. Deji Meets Girl will begin in October with 90-second weekly episodes. It's a modern fantasy story taking place in summer in Okinawa, where strange things start happening at the main character's parents' hotel after the arrival of a mysterious boy from Tokyo. Sounds like a nice summer relaxing show. And, and you know, we've never done this before. Right, yeah. Mysterious transfer student? No. Um... Uh, an anime, anime adaptation is also in the works for the Nature Learning Picture Books Insect Land, which explore the lives of insects, while also emphasizing themes of ecology and diversity. I'm guessing it's going to be aimed at a slightly younger audience than uh, our standard audience, but it could be fun. Uh, Variety reported this week that a new live-action Pokemon series is in development at Netflix. Uh, early sources list the executive producer and co-showrunner of Netflix's Lucifer series, Joe Henderson, as writer and exec producer for this series. A lot of special effects in Lucifer. Special effects heavy show, so it kind of makes sense for a show like this. Um, I, I do have to pause here. I, I have a pitch for this. Pokemon live action series. How do you do a Pokemon live action series? Um, because one of the problems here is it's going to be live action characters with CGI Pokemon, right? Um, and it's always kids. So how do you do a kid show with kid protagonists especially if it's not a one-off now granted netflix typically does you know they'll do one or two seasons and then cancel it but let's pretend that nintendo's like no 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 or uh, the, the, the 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 pokemon company's like no 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 this is going to be a thing we're going to do a live action you know long-term pokemon series here's my pitch i want to see what you guys think about this um they come out with a 26 episode live action series, half hours, maybe 30 episode, half hour, uh, 30 episode hours, about a young boy who goes out in the world and collects Pokemon and has adventures. And at the end of that story, he becomes a gym leader, right? One of the gym leaders in, in one of the gyms in his region or whatever. So it is like literally his story. It's not he's not that story, whatever, forever. Um, but he goes, and at the end, he wants to become a gym leader. He becomes a gym leader. That comes out. Fine. And then they announce season two. It's about a girl who wants to go out and collect Pokemon. 
and wants to challenge this gym leader. And so her story in season two is her becoming a Pokemon trainer, going out, collecting Pokemon, doing all these things, and then challenging the protagonist of season one, at which point she becomes a gym leader. And then season three is another kid. And so you can just keep on doing this over and over. The kids can still grow up. They can still come back as gym leaders later on in later shows. And you can keep that continuity. But then you have your kid every year, new kid every year, new thing, new Pokemon, and just keep on churning them out for time immemorial. That's my pitch. Pokemon Minuto. Minuto. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Yes. Minuto. Pokemon Minuto. Um, yeah. The, Obviously, live-action Pokemon is a a thing. Like I don't, I, that could go really poorly. <laughs> Kudos. Uh, I, I, I'm just having visions of Death Note. Like I'm just like <laughs> just, just things just being done so wrong, yep. so wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah. God, um, I've literally burned me on that one. <laughs> yeah, it's it, been years, and I'm still watching. It. Yeah, and I'm still annoyed with it. And the thing is, there was the Detective Pikachu movie, right? Which mm -hmm. was successful, but no, but no one was like, "Oh, I can't wait to see a TV series out of this." So who knows? Um, it was also announced this week that uh, the new game manga will end in the August twenty seventh issue of Manga Time Kirara, the series' final compiled volume, shipping a month later. It's about a small video game development company, um, which inspired a TV anime back in two thousand sixteen. Uh, and then finally, the staff of Anime Expo announced this week that the 2022 event will once again be held in person at the LA Convention Center. This year was the 30th anniversary for Anime Expo. Wow. Yep. So, here's hoping AX will be back next year yes. like yes. normal. That'd be nice. It would absolutely be nice. <laughs> <laughs> That's all the news for this week. Thanks for watching. See you all next week.